is vedanta practical the impression most of us have about vedanta or any philosophy for that matter is that it is meant only for the few who have dedicated their lives to such noble goals that it is for monks and swamijis that those of us living in the real world with jobs and responsibilities and families to take care of cannot do justice to it so why bother this is a fair question thanks for tuning into the vedanta channel in which i present ideas from hinduism the world's oldest religion and vedanta the spiritual heart of hinduism first let's see what we mean by practical more often than not when we say practical we only mean those things that we want or like if something matches our expectations it becomes practical when we are asked to do something that does not benefit us immediately we say this is idealistic i am not capable of that this is all i can do this is what we mean by practical this limited approach to life will naturally lead to a non-stop roller coaster ride of ups and downs if we think about it there is nothing practical about anything we do we are all pursuing some idealistic goal or the other the student aspires to get into his dream college the entrepreneur chases her dream of building the next google the mother wants her children to be engineers or doctors they are all idealistic goals even the man doing nothing is pursuing an ideal when we achieve the goal we find it underwhelming after some time has passed and we get back onto the treadmill and the cycle starts all over again so the most practical question to ask becomes what is that goal that can get us peace that does not come and go but rather is stable most of us understand this that we must give up something in order to gain something it is precisely for this reason that we hesitate to seek peace of mind even when we realize that is the goal we worry that we will pay a great price for our idealism it's a dog eat dog world out there in which nice people finish last we worry is it going to cost me my career relationships and bank balance here's the thing to keep in mind at any time there are two tendencies in us the first to reconcile what we do for the sake of personal survival with our higher beliefs and ideals the other tendency is to rise above short term tendencies in pursuit of loftier goals it is useful to understand this that our beliefs must dictate what we do and not the other way around else we condemn ourselves forever to be on the treadmill of life what is the goal of practicing a vedantic life to realize that your true self is divine that thou art three simple words one great sentence if you are able to see past your limitations and realize the completeness of yourself peace awaits you you were never born and you will never die the ideas of birth suffering and death are superstitions they are illusions that keep us trapped on the roller coaster have faith in yourself first god will come later real atheism is a lack of belief in our ability to achieve the ideal it has nothing to do with god this is what vedanta says shocking words i know are these delusional words are they escapist words of people looking for excuses to dodge their responsibilities not at all at the heart of it vedanta is activism at its finest it does not deny the realities of this world it says that to deal with these changing realities one must know the unchanging reality from which they emerge you cannot churn butter without knowing the nature of milk or fashion a pot without knowing the nature of clay well you can except these attempts are doomed to failure when we understand the finest nature of our being it fills us with love which is just another word for empathy the ancients called it ananda by doing so it opens the door 
to making anything possible. It gives us unshakable confidence and renewed vigor to proceed with life. It gives us true appreciation for the world. It strengthens our relationships. It deepens our belief in the divine. It brings us great calm. It makes us more valuable to the world. There is nothing impractical about such results. It is the calmest of minds that have produced the greatest of benefits to humanity. Angry men break the world and themselves along with it. Does Vedanta mean a cold existence, an abandonment of passion and emotion? Passion for what? Passion for impermanent objects inevitably leads to grief. We all understand this. A grief-stricken person inflicts grief on others. Where is the value in that? The only passion we are allowed is the pursuit of the ideal. Even that becomes toxic inevitably. If we don't fix ourselves, then there is nothing in the world we will be able to fix. If we don't understand ourselves, all other understanding comes to naught. What more practical goal can there be in life other than avoiding our own suffering and our tendency to inflict suffering on others? If you agree that this must be the goal, then the most practical course of action is to single-mindedly pursue the ideal that gets us to where we want to be. Everything else will inevitably follow. We must trust the process. This faith that we will be okay in the end if we try sincerely, that is the most practical faith of all faiths. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked what you heard, do consider subscribing to the Vedanta channel and sharing it with others like you who may be interested.